Ooh, oh, that dude just got sent to the storm. shadow realm in front of me. Hello, we're back with another Playoff Pass, where we jump into some co-op and multiplayer games and give you our thoughts on whether or not they're worth picking up. If you want to see more co-op and multiplayer content, feel free to hit the sub button below and join us each week as we review and play through all sorts of different multiplayer games. Today we're taking a look at a game that rewards you for your skill, careful gameplay, communication and teamwork. One that punishes you for your mistakes, and where you can easily find yourself getting one shot out of nowhere if you're not paying attention to your surroundings. This game is Insurgency Sandstorm, a team-based first-person shooter that's doubled down on the immersive atmospheric realism and the intense nail-biting close-quarters combat of the previous Insurgency title. Insurgency Sandstorm was originally released in December 2018 and included various game modes for both player versus player and player versus AI. The game itself is set during the conflict in the Middle East, and as a player you'll join a team of either insurgents or military forces to fight your way through a number of different war-torn environments and complete various objectives in order to win the round. However, it's not always that easy. The brutal realism baked into the game means that one shot can put you down, and the AI here aren't the same as the mindless creatures you find in other FPS games. They'll headshot you from 200 yards, throw grenades through windows like pros, and even drop shot you. Oh, he went prone. He actually, he quad tricked me. He did. He drop yeah. shot you. Yeah. That was embarrassing. <laughs> Recently, players of Insurgency have enjoyed an update that includes a new wave defense mode. So we thought it was a great time to jump in and let you know whether Insurgency Sandstorm is a play or a pass. As a lesser known FPS, we thought we'd give our view on how it stacks up against the big names, some of which we've already reviewed. Straight off the bat you get the impression visuals aren't going to be at selling point. It's nothing to write home about, but not bad enough to be any sort of issue. Jumping in a game we could immediately identify key characteristics that make Insurgency stand out. There's a clear focus on realism, achieved in such a way that you don't lose out on the quality of life that normal action shooters provide. The UI is extremely minimal, only really displaying the main objectives. You even have to hold reload just to check if your clip is running low. This reduces on-screen distractions for better situational awareness. HP is lower than you'd typically expect. Getting kills and being killed are very short-lived affairs, and we have particularly good experience in the latter. Although the pace of play is quite slow, it never crosses into being too slow. There is often action around every corner, and there are a good variety of game types to suit your pace and preferences. Firstly, there's a co-op mode for those that want to band together and complete objectives against NPCs. You attempt to either defend against a number of assaults, or capture a series of objectives until reaching the last one on the map. Don't misjudge this as easy, however, because in a game where you can get one shot, there is real skill in winning against what feels like AI aimbot at times. <laughs> oh, mate! Second, there are versus game modes. This is player versus player that revolves around completing objectives. We are Firefight, where you must capture and hold all three points at one time. Domination, basically Firefight, but teams also get points for holding these locations in the meantime. Push, where there is an attacking and defending team centered around a common objective. And Frontline, described as a two-way push and pull, where each team is claiming objectives until they are fighting over the last enemy location. Outside of these are also competitive play and a limited time game mode, which during our playtime was a map called Tell. This was a classic Insurgency 2014 map with a number of different game types played within it. Classes are quite different from one another and often have a pick limit for each team, for balance and to encourage variety. In general terms, Rifleman and Advisor are your run of the mill classes with no standout utility and basic weapon options with a broad range of customization. Breaches are used to clear up buildings and excel in close range engagements using SMGs and shotguns. Demolitions use explosive weaponry like RPGs to clear points or take down armoured vehicles such as helicopters. Gunner is an LMG wielding class that provides heavy fire support. Marksman has access to sniper rifles for long range picks. Commander can call in fire support by marking areas on the map with binoculars. An observer uses a radio to work with the commander in calling in fire support. If either commander or observer is hit, 
calling in support is delayed, so these roles require a particularly evasive skill set. There are a lot of weapon options in Sandstorm, like close quarters SMGs, various assault and battle rifles, long range snipers, and everything in between, each with a good amount of attachment options to make the weapon suit your preferences. When kitting out your character, most servers provide 10 points to allocate to gear, which forces you to prioritize the options you want to use, meaning you can't just pick everything available. The game does a really good job of realism whilst not being frustrating to play. No! Once we got used to how fast you die, we started to take things slow, play a tactical game, and actually work together. Yeah, man. Nice sound treatment. That's where it goes. Where, where'd you put your carpet? On the wall. On the floor, like a madman. <laughs> no way. Who does that? It's mad. I've seen it some places. The first person shooter market seems bursting at the seams with titles like Battlefield, Call of Duty, Destiny and Borderlands. Games where you can get away with sprinting at your enemy and trying to gun them down with brute strength and decent aim, rather than strategy or caution. However, there does seem to be a branch of the genre that's leaning towards realism, tactics, taking your time, staying aware of what's around you, and that punishes you for making mistakes. Insurgency Sandstorm is one of those games and it provides you with an immersion that other, more arcade-style games can tend to lack. The risk of being put down in one or two bullets makes you wary about the next corner, the windows above you, and the doors that you need to pass through to get to your next objective. The long spawn times mean that you can't simply throw yourself at the enemy and try again a second later. You have to think and be cautious or risk a team wipe. The original Insurgency balanced fun FPS gameplay, atmospheric sounds and environment, and high-risk combat excellently. And Insurgency Sandstorm has taken all of these elements that made it great and amplified them. Graphically, it's not the best title in the world, but with all of the intense gunfights, weapon customizations, atmospheric environments, and the need for having each other's back, we didn't seem to care too much if it wasn't the prettiest game we've ever played. Overall, we gave Insurgency Sandstorm a 3.5 out of 5. And for us, whether you're jumping in with friends or you're playing by yourself, it's still a solid play. Let us know in the comments what you think of the game. We're the Bullet Sponges, and we'll see you in the next one.